about a couple of the words that are, uh, you know, the Hebrew is so very rich, and, and it is so, has so much depth to it. And actually, some of the words that we use in Hebrew, they just teach a spiritual lesson. God communicates to us even through the words that he uses, okay? And uh, Shana and Mana are two words. So Shana is said like a person's name, like a girl's name, Shana. And Mana, because it has a single end, it's a little shorter, man, uh, man, uh, Mana. <clears throat> and uh, it's kind of Mana, uh, two syllables there, Mana. <clears throat> so let's take a look at these two words and tell you what we're talking about. Okay? <laughs> I'm not talking about Sean on all, okay? Yeah, that's Sean on all. We're not talking about that. We're talking about Sean on, okay? Sean on is, is, is what we're talking about. And Sean on, boy, we're going to get some interference now. It must be the storm coming in or something. But uh, Sean is the word for year. It's the word for year, okay? And so when we look at Shana, we, we, we get the, the year, and so we see Rosh Hashanah. You see the Shana in that? And so that's Happy New Year. Happy New Year with the Hebrews. Of course, the Hebrews begin their new year in the fall. It's nowhere near now, so we're getting very close to Passover, which is the ending of the, high, of the holy days, rather than, and Rosh Hashanah is the beginning. If we look at Rosh Hashanah, it, this year it's going to be quite late, just like Passover is, just like Easter is. It's going to be this end of September, the 1st of October for the uh, New Year. Remember, the Jewish calendar is on a lunar calendar rather than a solar calendar, so it doesn't always line up with ours. But uh, this year it's going to be a little bit later. Now, this, we're not going to talk about Rosh Hashanah, but we are going to talk about the word for year. Okay, the word for year. The Shana. It literally means to repeat or to do again. To repeat or to do again. And it's very closely linked to the number two. The Hebrew number two has the same root as Shana. And so when we think doing it again, repeating it, back, do that one more time. Will you do that a second time? You did it once, but do it a second time. Is what the year literally means. To repeat and to do again and do it a second time. Well, if we think of the seasons, if you think of the seasons, Spring is a repeat of last spring, right? I mean, the trees come out. We can pretty much expect there's going to be runny noses and coughing. And we know that summer is when it's going to get hot. It, it repeats itself. And so the whole, comp the whole concept of the rep repetition of Shana is repeated in the seasons. That every year is pretty much like the last year when you think about it. <coughs> that history repeats itself. That God repeats himself in the way that he speaks to us and does things <coughs> That there is, you know, he can be counted on, and that which he's done in the past, he will do it again. Which is Shana, he'll do it again, he'll repeat it, you see. And so the whole concept of the year is that there is this repetitive nature that can be counted on. We can count on that. And so when we look at it, it's kind of like lather, rinse, and repeat, you know, like a kind of idea that you lather, rinse, repeat, lather, rinse, repeat, and that's what a year is like. Shana is very much like that. Let's take a look then at Genesis 41.32. Genesis 41.32. Okay, Genesis 41.32, we read. Now, as for the repeating of the dream to Pharaoh twice, it means what the matter is to, that the matter is determined by God, and God will bring it about. The concept of the repeating and the twice are both manah and the Hebrew, all right? So not only is the year year meaning a year year, it means a year, but it also means here that it's repetitive, that it's a second time, that this, this whole concept of the word is more than just 12 months, uh, tells us that there's a repeating here for Pharaoh. But notice how God's determination is linked with those words here. That who determines the year? Who determines the seasons? Who sends those seasons? Who makes them happen? God does. And so the Hebrews see a very spiritual aspect in this year in that we only have a year because God makes a year. And we can trust in God's repetitive nature that he's going to do and give us another year. Another year. Another year. How many of you have ever heard, if the Lord's will? 
Okay, if the Lord's willing. Well, the Lord's willing is a concept of we have another year if the Lord sends another year. Right. And so this whole determination of God and Shana begins <coughs> at the very basis of what we talk about. Look at 1 Samuel 26. First Samuel 26, verse 8. First Samuel 26, verse 8 says, Then Abishai said to David, Today God has delivered your enemy into your hand. Now, therefore, please let me strike him with the spear to the ground with one stroke. Now just think about that. Can I just impale him one time right into the ground with my stick? You know, that's that's kind of grossed up, but that's what he said. Let me just let me just drive him right into the ground. And I will not strike him the Shana. Okay? So yes, it means year, but here it means repetitive nature. I have to do it again to, to strike one more time. Look at 2 Samuel 20. 2 Samuel 20. 2 Samuel 20, verse 10. Now again, remember, we're actually reading the word year, but we're not interpreting the word year. We're taking the broader interpretation of a second time of repetitive nature. That as the years repeat, so does the sword or the strike or whatever we're trying to do. So in 2 Samuel 20, verse 10, it says, But Amasa was not on guard against the sword which was in Joab's hand, so he struck him in the belly with it and poured out his inward parts on the ground and did not shana. We didn't hear him again. Okay? Year would not fit there, but it does talk about that second repetitive time. He didn't strike him a second time, and he, he, he died from that one strike, okay? Now, if we look then at 1 Kings 18. 1 Kings 18, verse 34. 1 Kings 18, verse 34 says... And he said, fill four pitchers with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. Who are we talking about here? Yeah, Elijah and the Baal prophets and all that. And, and he said, do it a second time. Shana again, okay? Do it a second time. And they did it a Shana. So do it a year. And yes, do it a year. But that's not what it means. It's a second time. Repeat it again. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. Okay, so we get the concept that this word has a multiple purpose of meaning. That it's more than just the, uh, the chronological time. Look at Proverbs 17, two more, two more. Uh, there are actually 12 places in the Bible which are used. I'm just cherry picking a few here uh, because they have different interpretations. But if we go to Proverbs 17. He who conceals a transgression seeks love, but he who shanaz a matter, repeats a matter, separates intimate friends. If you repeat it, do it a second time. So we've had a lot of different interpretation of here of second time, second time. Find in Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. This is a very famous verse. You've heard it many times, but you've not heard what it says. Proverbs 26, 11 says... Like a dog that shanaz to its vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. The repetitive, the returning, the going back to. Okay? So that's just to show the, uh, how the word is used by the Hebrews besides just the word year. That the word year definitely in their interpretation is one of a repetitive, consistent nature. As consistent as the year, as, as almost boring as the year is, that it repeats and it's a second time and it's a second time and it repeats, okay? Now, so we get that, to repeat, to do again, and it means like the number two. But here's where it gets interesting. This is one of the Hebrew words that has a second meaning, a second interpretation. In many words in Hebrew, it's very much like a coin. You have a quarter, but a quarter has two sides. And so there are actually words in Hebrew that mean one thing and almost mean the opposite in the same word. It's one of the only languages that does that. And I want to remind you that this is the language that God chose to speak. 
Hey, this is the language he chose to speak. I believe that Adam spoke Hebrew. I believe that Hebrew was the original language of man. And that in the Tower of Babel they were scattered, but there was one language that maintained God's people. And he continued to speak that language to us. And so the second interpretation for this means to change or to alter something to change it. Now, do you see the confusion that could be caused here? To repeat and to do it again, but now it's to change. To something different. Well, that's really not that odd when you think about a year, because although a year is the same after year, after year, after year, the seasons come, the seasons go, birthdays come, birthdays go, holidays come, holidays go, but has anybody ever had a carbon copy of one year or the next year? No. Have any of you ever had, the, you know, it's the fifth day of February, we have to do this, it's the sixth day of February, this is going to happen? When you think about it, the very essence of the year is that, it, yes, it is repetitive, but yes, it is full of change. And so to think of a year as something that is, that is something we can rely on, and we can count on, and we know when the seasons come, and we know what the seasons are going to be like, and it's comfortable, and we can rest in it, but yet, if that's all there is, it could be incredibly boring, and the fact that there's change is very important. Very important. Have you ever thought of like New Year's resolutions? Yeah. It's one more year. We're going to try one more time, okay? We're going to try one more time to hit the resolutions and, and make it happen. Why? Because although it is the same as last year, it is not the same as last year. It's quite radically different. So it only makes sense that a year could be interpreted as that which is totally, completely repetitive and consistent. But at the same time, there is no repetitive consistency in a year. It is totally, radically different. So the same word can be used for that which can be counted on and repeats, and also for changing something, because every year we hope to change things. We hope, boy, this is a better year than last year. I hope it's healthier this year than last year. I hope I lose some weight this year. You know, I hope that you know nobody dies this year. We had three people dying in our family this year, and I hope we don't have to go through the funerals again this year. Think of all the changes that we would like to look forward to in a year, and yet it's still the word here. It's just that the Hebrew take it and actually interpret the word as being two-sided. That a year is as reliable and yet as changeable. And can be interpreted that way. Okay? I like to say that Shana has a consistent side and that it has a promise side. The promise of change. The promise of new day. The promise of new light and in interpretation. We've said that, you know, uh, really Christianity is I hope I'm different next year than I am this year. Right? Isn't that the essence of our Christianity? I hope that I am closer to the Lord and walking closer to Him and understanding and hearing His voice better in 2020 than I do 2019. And I hope in 2019 I'm doing it better than I was in 2018. The essence of change is a part of the year. But yet it's still the consistency that is about me and God. Does that make sense? All right. So, when we look at the promise, then, when we look at the promise, look at Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I will do something new. Now it will spring forth. Will, it not, will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Boy, wouldn't that be a great promise for the new year that the barren year is going to be replaced with water? That where there's been desert, now there's going to be rivers. The whole idea is that God says, I'm all about the new. I'm all about the new. But think about the Old Testament. How much of the Old Testament is all about the same ritual on the same day, in the same way? You've got to follow this rule and do it this way? Well, but there's a promise of change. There's a promise in Shana. Look at Romans 6. Look at Romans 6. God has literally created and built this word to give us a promise. This is a word with a hidden message to us. Romans 6 verse 4 says, Therefore, we have been buried with him 
through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. The change, the change that's coming. Yes, you will be the same person you were. You'll be the, sh you'll be the same person you were, but you're going to be a different person. Just like the year will be the same, but you're going to be different. It's going to be a different year. Why? Because it's a different year. That's why. But is it the same year as like last year? Yeah, it's going to be the same year. We're going to have the same seasons. We're going to have the same months. We're going to have the same cold weather, same hot weather. But it's going to be different. It's going to be different. That's a picture of the Christian life. You don't physically change. You don't materially change. You don't on the outside change. But you are the opposite side of the coin that as you are still you, yeah. you are no longer you. That the consistent you that will not change on the outside, but the inside of you is all about change. That's the essence of the word Shana. The year. The second time. Take a look with me at 2 Corinthians 5. This is one that we know quite well. 2 Corinthians 5.17 is one that we use a lot. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Paul Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new species. The old things, Shana, have passed away. Behold, new things, Shana, have come. Just like the year. There is the old year, there is the new year. Some of it is the same, some of it is radically different. Jesus, uh, the Lord God, is telling us in the very word Shana that just like the year is the same and different, so it is going to be with you. So that it's going to be with you. In the very beginning when he created time and night and day and created the, the rotation of the earth and said there will be a year in which it takes a year for you to travel around the sun, this is going to be a double-edged sword for you. That there's going to be the sameness and yet there's the promise of a difference. So to repeat and to do it again. And yet, that becomes a symbol of the Old Testament. That to, to do it over and over and be consistent, and you must do this or else you will die, and you must do it this way or you'll not be forgiven. That the very word Shema is a shadow and a form of the word of the Old Testament that we're going to do it. But yet, look at the new thing, to change and to alter to change is representative of the New Testament. And so this word, this mysterious word, comes across and paints a word picture for us that the Jews have not yet understood. This is one of the mysteries that they're blind to and blinder to. And that the blind will be taken off. And they'll understand that the Old Testament is, is, is the lead up to the completion of it, that there's an alteration and a change in us that could not be done under the law. Amen. The law cannot make us perfect. And so Christ came and fulfilled the law and thus made us perfect. Does that make sense? Absolutely. All right. So when we look at Shema, it is a, a mystery that has two sides to it, that paints a picture that says, just like the year is the same, but it's different, so your life is going to be the same and it's going to be different. I am the same creator God, and the one who creates the world and creates the, the years and creates the months and creates the holidays. I have created you, and I have hidden the message even in the word. But then we go a step further to the word mana. The mana becomes the word uh, for day. Mana is the word day. So we're talking about year. We're talking about day. Psalm 90, verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12 reads, So teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. The word number... What have you got in other versions? We have other versions here. What do you got, Bob? Uh, that we may apply. Apply. Okay, okay. apply. Anybody got another word? Okay, the, the word number here. The word number 
is the word mana. Okay? That we are to number our days. We number our days. Yes, what do you have? Which is? The brevity of life. You see, days come and days go, right? And so this verse says you better count your days. You better take hold of your days. You better know that you better use your days well because they're short, right? And so the word days here is the word mana. Number is the question here. How can we number our days? Anybody know what tomorrow holds? How many of you are guaranteed tomorrow? Everyone of us could die in our sleep tonight, right? Everyone of us. We could die on the way home from church tonight. Then why, why, the Lord, why in the world would the Lord tell us to number our days when it's impossible to do? I want you to number your days. I can't number my days, God. You've asked me to do something I cannot do. But it's in the Word that we look at here. Let's go to the next verse. I'll show you. Okay. There you go. To number, to watch, to take account of is what the word number means. Watch your days. Take account of your days. This benign of our days, grabbing the day, taking a hold of the day. If we look at Jonah 1.17, we get some real insight, real insight into what this word means. Jonah's back behind the back, if, if that helps you. <laughs> back near the last quarter of prophets, okay? Jonah 1.17. Jonah 1.17. We are told to number our days. Jonah 1.7 says, Each man said to his mate, Come, let us cast lots. No, 17, I'm sorry, I'm not 7. I was going to say, that's the wrong verse. 117 says, and the Lord appointed. That's the same word as numbered in the Hebrew. It's the same word as, it's mana, okay? And the Lord mana a great fish to swallow Jonah. Now, did he count that fish? Did he number that fish? God. 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 Yeah, did he say one? Okay, we've numbered our days. We've numbered our fish. No, he took a fish and he either created it or he appointed it for a task. I am taking a fish and saying, you go swallow Jonah. He's directing the fish. He's giving it an appointment, okay? He's saying, you go there, you meet with Jonah, you swallow him, and you listen to what I have to say. We'll see what Jonah does in the belly. It depends on what we're going to do with him. All right? So this is an appointment. This is an order. This is a, a rendezvous. This is a plan that when we number our days, we're not going one, two, three, but instead we are making holy appointments of our days. So we have Jonah and the whale being appointed. Look at Jonah 4. Go to the fourth chapter. Verses 6 and 7. Jonah 4, 6 and 7. Jonah 4, 6 and 7 says, So the Lord God appointed a plant. He created. He made a plant. If he didn't create it right there on the ground like a burning bush, he had it there since the beginning of creation because he knew Jonah was going to need it. All right? But it was appointed. It was chosen. It was made for him. It was directed for him. He appointed a plant and it grew up over Jonah to be the shade over his head to deliver him from his discomfort. God was worried about this wine and prophet and his discomfort. And Jonah was extremely happy about the plant. Isn't it sad that he wasn't extremely happy about the Lord who abandoned the plant? He's not giving credit to God, but he's giving credit to the plant. Thank you, plant. And then verse 7 says, And God appointed a worm when dawn came the next day and it attacked the plant and it withered. Do you understand that God says we are not supposed to number one, two, three our days, but we are to make appointments of our days and we are supposed to be the times when we meet and fulfill the wishes of God. The 
Look at Psalm 90, 12. If we just take that word number and stop there, we don't get the message. We miss the point. So Psalm 90, 12 reads us, so teach us to number our days, to mana our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. All right. So we look at Shana. There is an old concept of Shana that I am the same, but there is the new concept that I am all about change, and I have been changed, and every day is to change. Mana tells us that a whole bunch of that is up to us. I can wait for the Lord to do something in me, or I can stir up the gift within me. I can work out my salvation with trembling and fear. I can choose to be holy even as He is holy. I can set my mind and my spirit on the things of God. I can give thanks in all things, and I can walk ye in it, because I can make a daily appointment with God. How many Christians are just waiting around for God to do something in their life when God says, number your days, appoint your days. It's in your hand to do so. It's up to you to get the job done. Look at Acts 19, 21. To take the years and the days of the Hebrew teaches us something about the New Testament that we've never seen before. It's never nailed us like this before. It brings us home and it's this in the mystery, in the word itself. Acts 19, 21. Now, after these things were finished, Paul purposed in the Spirit. He's appointing his day. He's making an appointment with God. He purposed in the Spirit to go to Jerusalem after he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia, saying, after I've been there, I must also see Rome. Do you think that maybe Paul was as effective in the gospel as he was because he was willing to manah his days rather than waiting for the days to be set for him? Yes. How many times do we get up in the morning and say, I don't, want to, I don't know what today holds, but I can hardly wait till tonight? I can hardly wait till tonight when it's over. I just hope it gets me through the day. How many of us go through the week and say, I can hardly wait, just get me through the weekend, Lord. Just get me through the weekend. Get me through, oh, Monday through Friday, just get me through the weekend. I'm telling you, being a school teacher, Saturday's a very important day to my students. It's a big day for them. It's You can take Monday through Friday, roll it up in a one great big ball, and Saturday is still three times more uh, exciting for them because there's no school, right? Yeah. And so they come to class, drag it in, sit down, <clears throat> listen to what they have to, do what they have to, and drag themselves back out. How many Christians have lived their entire experience living that way? Just wait for the bell to ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just wait for the bell to ring. That's all. I'm, I'm just filling the space. I'm just treading water. I'm just doing what has to be done rather than realizing that we have the ability to take our days and make them spiritual appointments with God and with a lost and dying world. Yes. And the very word, Manah, teaches us that. The Hebrew has the hidden message that we have that ability to take it. I kind of like this phrase. I, don't let your days determine your life. Let your life determine your days. As a Christian, we shouldn't be riding the tide. We ought to be splitting the water. We ought to be dividing the water. And when we can't divide it, we ought to walk on it. We don't ride the tide. We set the course of the sail of the ship wrong. Mm -hmm. Jonah had an opportunity 
to go towards the town of revival or to set sail the other direction. Yes, sir. The opposite of what we have the potential of doing. The opposite. Do you see that he's a metaphor? He's a metaphor that we can set sail towards what he wants us to have. And in so doing, we run from our past. Jonah was running from the revival and sailing away. We set sail on the rising tide and the lowering tide. It doesn't matter if the tide's up or down for me. It doesn't matter if I'm wealthy or poor, rich or sick, Paul said. Whatsoever state I find myself therein, I am content. Wow. Setting the course for my day. This is just a cherry on top of the cupcake <coughs> of our, it's not the enemy, it's the enemy. enemy. Do you see the connection? Yeah. I'm, not, I, I'm not making this up, you're seeing the connection. I hope, I hope it's not just in my spirit that I'm excited by this, but you are too. That we have two words that mean this very essence of our year is one of change and is a picture of the New Testament that is in all throughout the Old Testament. Every time there is an annual celebration, guys, every time they have Passover, every time they have first fruits, every time they have Feast of Tabernacles, every time they have a Rosh Hashanah, it is God screaming in their face, there's going to be a time of change coming. The very word year means change. Do you get it? And they went, well, let's do the same thing this year we did last year. Let's just, just do the same thing. Let's make sure we get the celebration. Let's make sure we get the sheep. Let's make sure we get the barley. Let's make sure we get the, the offerings. Let's make sure we do the same thing. And how many Christians live in the same experience of year by year ritual? And the whole concept of a year is to challenge us that there's a New Testament coming. There's a completion coming. There's a new contract coming. But rather than having to do the same over and over again in hope, we can live and walk in newness of life. It's ours. It's ours. And so the word Shana and Manah are our promise that this year is not only going to be better, but it's going to be better because I make it yeah. better. Does the Lord want me to be closer to Him? Yes. Yes. Does the Lord want me to walk closer to Him? Yes. Does the word, Lord want me to listen more to Him? Yes. Does the Lord want me to obey Him and, and be in communion with Him more? Yes. Then if it ain't happening this year, guess who failed? That's right. You see, he's doing everything he can to get it done, and so he has put it in our hand to appoint our day to say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will, I by a choice of my will, choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Amen. That is the metaphor, that's the picture, that's the mystery of Shema and Manah. The year and the day is yours. Amen. Amen.